bring all of that together. There's more than 60% there of the reason for travelling on board the ferry was for the visitors to the region. So they really are key assets to the visitor economy. One of the other things that was able to help us with is the survey. We were asking people about the numbers who they were travelling with at that point. And the reason we asked that is to look at the types of design and layout of the seating on any new vessels. And this was not surprising for commuters. The majority of commuters were travelling alone. But for our leisure groups, what it did identify for us is the numbers of people travelling were with maybe one or two children or as couples. So what we thought was a really big family market, actually the research was telling us something else. And that will impact on the design and layout of the seating of the new vessel. We won't create seating groups of six, seven or eight seats. It will be more looking for focus around four seats. And it's that type of detailed information which will be really useful when we start to go into the design. But more pleasingly for me particularly and for the team too, and this has been shared with staff members, we asked a very simple question around the satisfaction of the current service. So from a leisure perspective, we got 86% of people that are either satisfied or very satisfied with the existing services we offer. And more pleasingly, 94% of our commuters felt exactly the same. And it would be useful just to share what some of those comments look like, just again to be transparent and so members can understand. For those who are very satisfied, down the left-hand side, they recognise their economic status and their recognition of around the world. They're, you can see, beautiful and a good standard of repair and colourful. I promise you that wasn't a member of staff. And it's pleasing to get to work and the free coffee was mentioned by the commuters, which is always a very popular thing. But again, in the interest of transparency, on the right-hand side, we did capture the information for those who weren't satisfied or were very dissatisfied. And the two trends it's picked up, for me, one around the vessels are old and outdated, they can be more fuel efficient, and clearly that's our aim in purchasing new vessels. And there was a, a range of feedback around the costs associated with travelling on the vessel, all of which we'll take into account as we move forward as part of this research. Okay, if we move forward and focus at this point on much really and what our customers told us about what they'd like to see on any new vessels and really for us the key message was more about the experience rather than the look and feel of vessels it was very evident for us and the colours i'm sorry they don't break down very well on the screen but the colours around and you would expect a different demand from leisure users than you would expect from commuters <laughs> And that's evidence, and we expected that. That's not a surprise for us. But what was very evident is actually people keep feel more about their experience on the board, about things like the seating, the Wi-Fi, the audio commentary. That's much more important to them than the layout and the look of the vessel itself. And that was very evident what the research has shown us. For those on leisure trips, audio commentary is very important, as you'd imagine. That was the one that came out on top, and that's something that we'll focus on in the design arrangements. The audio commentary, but also the ability for that to be flexible as it needs to be, and offered in different ways and more personal experience, is something we'll look for in the design. The challenge for us here, really, we asked for the three most important factors for any new vessel, and what would you see? It was really interesting, it's one that was not a surprise to us, but one that's a significant challenge, is indoor and outdoor seating. And what that was telling us, like I say, wasn't a surprise. But when the sun shines, everyone wants to sit outdoors, and when it rains, everyone wants to sit indoors. And that's the challenge that we need to face, so we need to think about how we address that with our new vessels. The toilets, interestingly, Wi-Fi is much more important for our commuters than it is for our leisure users and some other factors, but not critical as it goes down. And we asked the opposite question, what are the least important things that they'd expect to see on board any new vessel? So, souvenir shop, people are probably not travelling to, to, to purchase souvenirs. Something that's often mentioned, we have a shop on board the ferry. Our focus has always been, actually, the, the shops and the retail spaces are in the terminals rather than on board. Bike racks, well, we need to take into account when people make reference to that, that's natural. There will be, if you say that, there are bike racks planned on the new vessel. You're 
always had had the minority say that in the survey type. We you can see examples there about Wi-Fi more important or le less important, sorry, for less users. So it's a reverse of what we've already shared. Okay. It was interesting. We asked about the specific design of the current vessels, and we asked people to share their views. And this one for us really just demonstrates people like the existing traditional look, the current existing feel of a vessel as it is now. The majority want to see that repeated, and you can see just in terms of numbers, from a leisure user perspective, that's in the region 75%. And from commuters, they see it much more functional, I'm sure, but it's still over 60%. percent would like to see the traditional look and feel of the vessels retained. It was an interesting question we asked this one because it was an emotive subject when we introduced what people remember the concern when we introduced the Dazzle vessel some four years ago. And it was one of those ones we were nervous of when people first saw it on the river and the impact that she'd had. And it was one of those Marmite moments when people would either love her or not. But now she's been on the river for four years, it's actually it's our most popular vessel. So we were interested to explore with our customers in this survey what would they feel about the vessel changing its image and its look for special events in the city. And you can see from that response that the vast majority were very, very much in support of that. Quite how we do that, we'll ask for that as part of the design process. It could be through lighting, it could be in other ways, other than innovative ways, but there's definitely support about doing something different to recognise the uniqueness that that brings for the city region. And then we asked a couple of just specific questions around the food offer on board. Clearly for us, we needed to understand that as we're designing new vessels, we want to make sure we use the opportunity to capture new markets if that's possible too. So we wanted to make sure that we understood the demand from our customers around that food offer. Not as many as you think would expect it. Still a majority there, but only just a majority. But more interestingly, on the next slide, plan was always to have some type of food offer, but this slide goes into a bit more detail about what that offer would be. So often we'll get, we needed to have better catering facilities, we needed to make sure that all of that comes significant cost and significant space and problems accommodating that. So the current vessels don't have cooking facilities on board, it's unlikely any new vessels will have cooking facilities on board, and we wanted to test that really with this question. And what this showed us really is the majority of people are looking for just basic refreshments, hot drinks, snacks, rather than the full meal that people, some people or the minority would expect. Okay. Just some key messages that what this research has told us, the real messages that will go out now and will help to shape the designs of the new vessel. Pleasingly, for me and for you, I hope, there's been a high level of satisfaction amongst existing users which shows the vessels and the service we provide is a positive one. We expected varying requirements from different users. So it's really important that in designing the new vessel, we create flexible and adaptable spaces that can change dependent on use and weather. So really, a commuter will have different demands than someone on a leisure or and a different demand again than people on an evening cruise. The customer experience on board is more important than the look of the vessels themselves. And for me, it was really pleasing, the last point, there was nothing in the research that was left field for us. So for us, there were no surprises in that detail. All of those factors have been discussed, considered, and researched as part of our outline specification. So we are in a good place to move on with the procurement sooner rather than later, and use this information as part of that process. So, Take any questions from anyone has in respect to that research? Brilliant. That's uh, Gary. We've got Gordon first. Uh, Steve. Thanks very much, Chair. I wonder, Gary, if you remember a trophy like this one in front of the chair not many years ago for the ferries. It was very good to see that one. You talked about visual uh, information screens. Is that possibly a way of informing people, uh, the public generally? Of what local events are happening and also bring in a revenue stream? Yes, simply. It's something we're exploring at the moment. Um, one of the questions we asked, we obviously haven't shared every single question in the research, and one of the questions we asked was around sponsorship. The majority of customers are open and receptive for sponsorship, something we're actively exploring. 
exploring, as you already know. But yes, the, whether it's, it's the existing vessels or the new vessels, we are looking to put visual screens on board. It's a way of sharing information with our customers, which is probably a little bit more dynamic than the leaflets, but it still would be supporting that. And yes, there's a potential revenue stream from doing so. Steve? Yeah, um, the, one of the issues we've had with, with the current vessel is the fact it's got a funnel running through the centre, and that makes it almost impossible for all of the audience to be in one place at one time. Yeah. Uh, to have a clear view, so if you were putting an event on, it'd be very difficult. Uh, I went on the murder mystery night, and we had to go around the deck to find where the murder was done, and so on and so forth. It was, it was, it was fun, but complicated. Um, so the, the, the thing I would see is that, you know, people would hire that boat for a, a number of events. And recently the, the government's <coughs> announced the relaxation in the where you can get married, various places where you can get married. And we've always had a struggle of getting sort of wedding events and stuff like that, which is a big market. So hopefully the design will take into account the ability to do big events for you know for good income source and you know to be a major attraction. Say we're holding an international conference, take the delegates on board and have an event on board. So I'm excited about the new design, uh, but it's not going to look new, but it's going to be functionally new, and, and that looks, that sounds to me the, the best of both worlds. So if we can explore further both the wedding events for the current boats as well, because that'll be around some significant time, uh, and look forward to designing it for big events that'll make bit, lots of money. So, thank you. Well, I can reassure you straight away, the, the funnel issue is the one that the, the research team picked up or on the project team picked up really quickly. So there's a balance in there. The new vessel will appear to have a funnel, but we'll get all the functionality of, of not needing that. So yes, we will have open spaces on the new vessel. And already <coughs> the outline designs that we've seen, although they are subject to change, will create not just the wide open spaces, but also the flexible spaces to close areas off. Because a lot of the demand that we get, Steve, isn't just for the whole boat, but maybe just for small sections of it. So we very much picked that up as part of the design. The wedding one is more complex, certainly will research it. There's been a complication around it being in the middle of the river. There's no reason why we can't be alongside for the actual wedding ceremony and then go into the river afterwards. So I'll pick that action up, yes. Yeah. Yeah, marry across the Mersey, yeah. <laughs> Go on, Jerry. 